Okay, good morning, Geometry Honor students. So, Mr. Chen again. So, this one today I would like to talk about the uh, special parallelogram. So, started with the rectangle. So, we do have um, three different types of special parallelograms. So, one is a rectangle, the other one is a square, uh, actually, four of those. And then the, the third and the fourth one would be a rhombus and a kite. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, this one right here. Well, chi, let's see. No, chi, it's not the special parallelogram. But we do have a rhombus, square, and a rectangle. So the measure of two consecutive angles of a parallelogram are in the ratios 5 to 4. So what's the measure of an obtuse angles of the parallelogram? Okay, so this one, again, given the ratios, so the parallelogram with the two consecutive angles. So anytime that you come up with a consecutive interior angle, the sum is always 180. So the total ratio here is, would be 9, because 5 plus 4. So we do know that 5 is being the dominant ratio, so using that, so 5 over 9 times 180, because you want to get up two's angles, so 9 goes into 180, so then that would be what, 20? So 20 times 5, so that would be 100, so it's 100 degree for the two's angle. So a rectangle is a parallelogram with one right angle okay so well it's actually more than one right angle it's got to be four of those the corner okay as you can see that all the opposite angles are congruent okay so properties of a rectangle so a rectangle has all f the properties of a parallelogram which is true opposite sides are congruent opposite sides are parallel right and then also the angle opposite angles they're congruent as well and also the diagonal, you just draw the diagonal here, they're actually considered congruent as well. Not just bisecting each other, but also they're congruent. Okay? So a rectangle contains four right angles and therefore a quadrangular, okay? The diagonals of rectangles are congruent. If a quadrilateral is a rectangle, then it's a parallelogram. It is. If a parallelogram is a rectangle, then the, its diagonals are congruent, which is true. Okay, so let's explore the properties of a rectangle. The diagonals of a rectangle are congruent, so which is true. So WY, it's 19. So what's ZX? Same thing, 19 as well. So WY, it's 19. What about WT? Half of it, because that the diagonal, they bisect each other. So 19 over 2 which is what? Then that'll be 9.5. And then TX, so TX is 4.5. Then WY, which is what? Twice as long as the other one. So two times 4.5, then that'll be what? Nine, like that. So it's pretty straightforward. So rectangle GALS has diagonal GL and AS. So GL is 3A plus six. And AS is 5A minus 18, solve for A. So basically just set them equal to each other because the diagonal, they're considered congruent to each other. And then solve for A, subtract 3A both sides, so we got 2A. Add 18 both sides, so we got 24, so A equals 12. So the measure of angle 1, it's 55 degree find all the missing angle. If this one is 55, that means, well, this angle got to be what? Congruent to this one, because this one is like a kind of like an angle bisector. So 55, well, not bisecting, it's actually 90 minus 55, because that's 90 degree. So 90 minus 55, then that would be considered 35. So angle 2, 35 degree. And then once we get angle 2, so how do you get the rest of the angle here? So if this one is 35 degree, this one is also considered 35. So 180 minus 70, so this one would be considered 110. Okay, so if this one is 110, this one is also considered 110 as well. So angle 4, 110 degree. And then the rest of the angle, consecutive well, this one is a linear pair or supplementary. 110, 180 minus 110, then you'll get what? 70. 
so 70 degree. And also, this one is satisfied via exterior angle theorem. Okay, so 35, 55, 35. So the other angle here, it's also considered what? 55. Okay, like that. Okay, so the measure of angle BDC, it's 7x plus 1. Okay, so BTC, and then the measure of angle ADB, it's 9x minus 7, find the measure of angle BDC. So basically combine those two angles together and set equal to 90 degree using the properties of a rectangle. So 7x plus 9x, 16x, 1 minus 7, negative 6 equals 90. Add 6 on both sides, so we got 96 divided by 16, so x equals 6. And then once you solve for x, so find the measure of BDC, so plug in a number, so 7 times 6 plus 1. So 42 plus 1, then you got 43 degrees. Okay, so here's more practice. Okay, so you guys are more than welcome to try. Okay, so this one, all the practice problem. So this one is given with the angles, and then you want to find out the measure of the number angle in each rectangle. Measure of angle 1, angle 2, angle 3, angle 4. Again, given that the measure of the angle, find out the missing angle here. So the one that I really want to show you is that the proof. So rectangles W, X, Y, Z. Okay, so that's a rectangle. So M is the midpoint. So we want to prove that triangle Z, M, Y, it's an isosceles triangle. So I'm sure a lot of students know how to get started with the proof, like the given statement. But once you start with the given statement, and then you have no clue what's happening there. Again, we're using that, the given statement, to refer to all those properties. If this one is a rectangle, in order to show that Z, M, Y, it's an isosceles triangle, so we need to show that those two sides got to be congruent or the base angle got to be congruent as well. Okay, so one thing that we can do, we can just show that this two triangle here, they're congruent, okay? So the, in order to show those two triangles are congruent, so one thing that we can start it with is that the uh, segment, okay, so this one's ditto. So segment WZ is congruent to segment XY. So this one is just using the properties of a rectangle. Okay. And then another thing that we can stay here, so since this one is the midpoint, so one thing that we notice, WM is congruent to XM because that's the midpoint, so this one is kind of like cutting this into half. So therefore, this one is by using the properties of the uh, definition of a midpoint. Okay, so we got psi, psi, and then what about the angle? So those two angles right here, angle W is congruent to angle X equals 90 degree. So this one is by using the properties of a rectangle. And also you can say that it's the definition of congruent angle as well. So this one, yeah, just say that it's 90 degree first. And then say that angle W is congruent to angle X. Definition of congruent angles. So therefore triangles, WMZ, So triangle WMZ, oops, is congruent to triangles XMY. So this one is by using psi angle psi. Again, we want to use that hypotenuse in leg, but the hypotenuse, we don't know about that yet. 
and after we prove those two triangles congruent so another thing that we can stay so segment MZ is congruent to segment MY by using CPCTC congruent corresponding part of congruent triangles are congruent okay so once we prove that and also we can say that angle WZM well there's no need to say that it's pretty much it's good enough because we just need to show that those two sides are congruent so therefore you know some people might be saying that the base angle do we need to prove that the base angles are congruent as well not necessarily as long as we're showing that those two sides are congruent so by using definition of an isosceles triangle so we can say that it's an isosceles so triangle ZMY is isosceles so definition of an isosceles triangle Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. So here's another proof you guys might want to try. Okay, so parallelogram ABCD with AB extended, okay, extended to P, okay, all the way out here. So that CP is perpendicular to AP. Okay, so CP is perpendicular, 90 degree. So AP and, well, DQ is perpendicular to AP as well. Okay, so 90 degree. So you want to prove that QPCD. Okay, QPCD, it's a rectangle. So in order to show that, you want to prove this two triangles congruent first. Okay, so once you prove that this two triangles congruent, well, we can use the special property of the parallelogram. So the opposite sides are congruent. And this one, since we do know that's a right triangle, so we can apply that the um, hypotenuse and leg perhaps well, if, if that's possible so in order to prove that the hypotenuse and leg so let's see so you probably want to use that the angle Yeah, just use that the angle angle side instead of using hypotenuse and leg. Because those two angles, since there's two line segments are parallel, congruent, so this two angle here got to be congruent as well, corresponding. And also using the right angle right here, angle angle side, so proving that this two triangles congruent. So once we prove this two triangles are congruent, so the easy things that we can stay, line segments DQ. It's congruent to line segment CP. Okay. So opposite line segments, they're congruent. So another thing that we can stay here. We can also stay that AQ. is congruent to BQ by using CPCTC. Yeah, but that one, no need to use that. So this one is 90 degree angle, so that means op opposite angle, I mean the alternate interior angle here, so it's also considered 90 degree. Okay, so up here, 90 degree, and then the one up here, it's also 90 degree. Okay, and also that the um, this angle here, 90 degree. So once you show that all 90 degree, and also that the uh, opposite sides are congruent, so we can say that quadrilateral QPCD is a rectangle. Okay, so that's another proof you guys can try. So let's do the challenging questions right here. So. In the rectangle, the length is twice the width, okay? So the length is twice the width. So let's say that the width is W. So the length is two times W. And the perimeter of this rectangle is 48. So the way to find out 
the perimeter of a rectangle is always what? 2W plus 2L. So that equals 48. But since we do know that L is also 2W, so that means it's 2W plus 2 times 2W. So that equals 48. So find the area of this rectangle. So let's solve for W first. So 2W plus 4W, so we got 6W equals 48. So W equals 8. So once we solve for W, and then we want to find out the length. So 2 times 8, so the length would be 16. So find the area, the way to find the area of a rectangle. Length times width, or base times the height. So 16 times 8. 6 times 8, 48. 1 times 8, 8 plus 4, 128. And the unit for this one, there's no unit. People might want to stay that square unit, which is fine, or just leave that with the number. All right, so again, so the summary properties of a rectangle. Okay, opposite sides are parallel, opposite angles are congruent, opposite sides are congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary, and the diagonal bisect each other. Also, all four angles are right angle, the diagonals are congruent, and then, yeah, so pretty much that's about it. So here's the exit ticket problem. You guys can try. All right, so thank you for watching the video today. So I'll see you guys next time.